guys and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in again and if you're new here my name is Melissa I live in Auckland New Zealand with my husband and son we moved um, from Dubai to New Zealand and originally we are from South Africa so I'd love to have you stick around for videos all about being in New Zealand immigrating to New Zealand being a mom hacks hauls recipes and just about everything in between so please be sure to hit the subscribe button in today's video, I'm going to be sharing a couple tips or hacks which have really helped us make our money go a little bit further each and every paycheck. There are so many different ways to save money here in New Zealand, so I thought I'd put a list together just to share with you. And please, if you do have your own, comment down below with them as well so that we can always help each other out. A lot of these programs are things which run in different countries as well, but these are just a couple things that have really worked here for us, so I thought I would share them with you. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So the first money saving tip I have for you is rewards programs. We all know them and we've all had experience with them, but in New Zealand there are tons to choose from and there are some that are really handy and useful. There are ones for grocery shops, there are ones for fuel, there's ones for airplane points, there's all sorts of different ones out there, but two in particular which have really helped us get some rewards back really quickly as well which I feel is really important often when you get reward programs it seems like it takes forever to get something back from it from just swapping your card right so for me as a consumer I really enjoy getting a reward pretty quickly um, and for less money spent if that makes any sense so two places where I found this really really useful are countdown which is where we do a lot of our grocery shopping so you just get a little countdown card you swipe it every time you shop and you accumulate points and really it's pretty much every two months or so that I get some cash back to spend at countdown so that's been really useful and the other rewards program that's been really useful for me is the mobile smiles card which is for petrol so every time you go to fill up your car you just swipe that card and you get six cents off per liter which is quite a lot of money um, when you're filling up your car from empty obviously it's not as much when you are putting in a small amount of petrol but I actually think there's a cap limit um, that applies to the discount when you fill the car Another one which has been really great, just to add on to those two, is um, a coffee card at BP. I don't personally use this because I don't drink a lot of coffee um, from garages and stuff, but my hubby is on the road and he drinks quite a bit of coffee out on the road and he swaps his BP um, coffee card and every fifth coffee is free. So that's a really quick way to get a bonus and to get a coffee for free, right? The second thing which I've recently discovered, and I know it's probably been around for quite some time, so I've probably just come out of a hole, but um, is a Christmas savings club. So these are run by multiple companies here in New Zealand, and the idea behind it is you get the card and you slowly put increments of money into it as throughout the year, so that by the time you head to Christmas, you've got a nice savings to use at that store. So I know Countdown, our grocery store does it, Pack and Save does it, and New World does it. So those are the three main grocery stores here in New Zealand. I think there's a couple other big names as well, but those are the three biggest ones um, here. And you can go and sign up for their Christmas club, you get a little card and you put money into it. And then by the time December comes, you've got some money to do your Christmas lunch and your Christmas Eve lunches and the whole festive season, which is a really cool idea. I did read up today that Countdown actually gives you an extra 5% on whatever you have saved. Now, of course, the thing with this is, is that you need to spend that money in their store. So it's a clever way of them making sure that they're actually getting some money in during the December holiday. The other one that I found today during my research was one that the post office has bought out here in New Zealand and basically it's a visa card and with this visa card you've got to be over 10 years or older so it's really great for your kids as well and it's also a Christmas saver and you put money into it and you can use it anywhere in the world um, by the time December comes so you can use it for online shopping, you can use it on your travels, it's a really cool idea. So I think once Bowden's a bit older I'll definitely get that one going for him and I might even get one for myself to start saving for Christmas because let's face it, Christmas is just so expensive. And unfortunately, it's not like South Africa here where you get a bonus over December. We don't get those as teachers here. Um, some companies do do bonuses, but it's often only in February when the financial year ends. So that's something to get, keep in mind as well when you are financially planning when you move here. The third one that I wanted to talk about is you can do a credit card cashback system. 
but this is not something that I have personally experienced with. There are loads of credit card cashback programs out there. Um, like I said, I don't have one personally, so I can't really talk too much about that. But there is a lot of information available online, so I'll link that down below. And I know certain banks have different rewards and there's different ways for you to earn. I actually spoke to a friend this past week and she was saying to me how she does all of her shopping and all of her bill paying through her credit card. And if you've got the willpower, then good on you. But um, basically what she does is she does that. She does all her payments, she does all of her shopping, everything through her credit card and does a direct transfer every time she's paid from her debit card to her credit card account. And that way she accumulates points really, really quickly. So that's great because that really works for her. The fourth one is fly bars or air points, which is quite a big thing here in New Zealand. It's also a rewards program and you are issued with a fly bars card or a air points card and you can swipe them at multiple places here in New Zealand. So places like Mata 10, which is like your um, hardware store. You can swipe them at, the, at um, New World, which is a grocery store. You can just swipe them everywhere. And the great thing is, is you accumulate points and you can use those for um, domestic flights, international flights, but you can also use it to do shopping on the online store. I know Qantas also has an online store where you can use their points to purchase things like appliances or um i don't know coffee cups coffee machines things like that so those are also a, that's also a really great way to make your money to earn points and earn free things while you spend money the next tip i have for you to save money is to pay your bills as you are paid so in my case i'm a teacher here i get paid fortnightly which means i get paid every two weeks and most of my bills, so my electricity, water, um, our Wi-Fi, our cell phone bills, our insurance policies, things like that, they come off monthly. So that makes it a bit tricky if you're not careful with your money, if you're not saving or ensuring that the, there is a correct amount of money for those things to come off at the end of the month. So what I do personally is I don't download the apps for all the different companies that I use or my, all my different service providers. So I've got a Vodafone service provider, so I've got their app, um, I've got our Mercury which is our electricity and I have arranged our life policies and insurance policies to come off at different times of the month. And this has been really useful because what will happen is I will get paid fortnightly and even though my electricity bill or my uh, cell phone bill is not due, I will go and deposit money and put credit into those so that it is paid um, evenly across the month. So instead of being stuck with a huge bill at the end of the month, um, and being paid the same that I was paid in two weeks into the month, I will pay it half and half so that it's evenly split and that I'm not feeling a huge um, decrease on my salary when I get paid, if that makes any sense. The next tip I have is to keep an eye out for two for one deals. We have loads of those that happen here in New Zealand, um, often in stores, you can buy two, get one half price, buy one, get one half price, buy one, get one free. Um, and that goes across the board, not only in clothing stores, toy stores, furniture stores, um, electronic stores, even in our takeaway stores, there's a lot of those um, deals that happen as well. The next tip I have is one that I got from someone that I work with and I was like, how do you afford to shop at Briscoe's and Rebel Sports? And Rebel Sports is some way that um, stocks things like Adidas and Nike and you know, all these really expensive brands. Briscoe's is like your at home, if you're from South Africa, type home store. So a little bit upmarket type of home store and upmarket sports store. And I was like, how do you afford to shop there? You know, like it's really difficult on a teacher's salary. And she was like, well, just wait for the specials. And I was like, oh, okay. And once she had told me that, I realized that stores like Briscoe's and Rebel Sports often have specials and it's just best to wait for them. It's almost every two weeks that there's some sort of special going on. So it's, it's good to wait for those specials. The other good special to wait for is definitely Black Friday and Cyber Friday specials. Here in New Zealand, before Black Friday rolls around, we have something called Cyber Friday or Cyber Weekend, where all of our electronics go really, really cheap. And that's actually where I purchased my laptop. And um, I know a lot of my friends have purchased their laptops on Cyber Weekend as well. And that's all close to Black Friday dates. Um, but then there will be like public holiday specials here as well. So Watangi Day, which is a public holiday here, 
their specials with that, um, their specials with Matsuriki, their specials with all these different um, public holidays here, or Queen's birthday special weekend. So just wait for those specials. It's a great way to extend your money and um, just to get more bang for your buck. My next tip, which I use all the time, is shopping online. When I go into a mall, I am super tempted to go into all the different stores, try the clothes on, and oh, I'll just spend $20 here or $20 there. Before you know it, you have spent a fortune. So the best way to avoid that is to shop online. And I mean shop online not only for your groceries, but for your clothes as well. So you guys know if you're um, a regular on my channel, I do all my grocery shopping online. And a way that I save money there is I can look at numbers straight away and be like, well, does this fit in my budget? Does it not fit into my budget? What can I move around? What alternative can I purchase to make my bill a little bit lower and to fit within my budget? It also stops me from buying mindless things. Also, not all the products that are available at the store are on the online store, which also makes it easier to avoid those tempting things like, oh, wow, look, um, they have this amazing convenient product, let me purchase it. And when you're online, you kind of avoid that stuff. You go and you search for exactly what you want, you make your list and you put it in your cart and it just is a quick way to save money. The other thing that I do, which is probably a bit strange, but it works for me, is if I am in need for clothes, so it might be um, Shein is an online store that I really like to shop at, or Cotton On, or The Warehouse, or Kmart even, and I will have a look at what they've got available and I'll pop it into my cart and I will leave it in my cart for up to a week, two weeks at a time. And I know you run the risk of it being sold out, however, this makes me really think about whether or not I need those items and if it's really necessary to buy three sweaters instead of two for example so um, it just really helps me think about my purchases and make wiser decisions when I'm spending my money the next way to save money in New Zealand is called the Kiwi Saver and this is something that the government runs here in New Zealand and it comes directly off your salary it's kind of like our pension fund in South Africa um, but you can withdraw your Kiwi Saver to help you purchase your first home um, when you're in New Zealand. Now the Kiwi Saver unfortunately is only for New Zealand residents um, and not for anyone on a work visa but we've recently got our residency and we've just started with our Kiwi Savers last year and the way that it has grown so quickly over the last three months is quite amazing. So you can opt for different amounts or different percentages that you want taken off your salary each month or each Fortnight. So that's something to keep in mind as well. If you're being paid fortnightly, how many times, how much percentage do you want off fortnightly and how is that going to look over a month period? Um, and then if you're being paid monthly, what's that going to look like if it's being taken off monthly? So there are different um, options for the Kiwi Saver as well, but I will post more information down below for you in the link. The other thing which I would really suggest is setting up an auto debit savings account. If so what I would do is I would open a savings account with the bank, which is what we've got here, and automatically every fortnight I've set my account up that a certain amount of my salary goes directly into our savings. That way I don't even handle the money at all and the moment I'm paid that money moves over. Yes, I can just go over to my online savings and withdraw the money, but it's just so much easier to let it go automatically i don't even miss the money because it's so i'm like in such a habit of it happening now but if i were to transfer the money manually every fortnight i think it would be a little bit more difficult so i would really suggest setting up an auto debit on your account the other thing that you can do here in new zealand and i'm sure in other countries in the world as well is you can approach your bank and you can get something called a serious saver well that's at least what it's called at our bank and with the serious saver it's one of those where you have to give them notice that you want to withdraw money so um that money is really almost untouchable but it is there and it's less tempting to go and remove money from it um, because you have to give the bank notice and things like that. Okay, and for a bonus um, advice, if you're a teacher here in New Zealand, you actually qualify for a whole bunch of different discounts as well as if you're a student. Just like ha we have student discounts in South Africa and student discounts in Dubai and wherever you are in the world, there's often student discounts. Here in New Zealand, you can show them your registration card and you can get a discount at certain stores. These stores include places like Noel Leeming, which is an electric 
electronics store. They sell all your artware, all your electronics, um, all your kitchenware, um, like kitchen appliances, sorry. You can get a discount at Nolime. There you can get a discount at Whitcoles, which is a bookstore. Um, often places like Kelly Tolton, which is our aquarium here, offers a discount as well. There's places like the zoo, which will run a teacher weekend or teacher two week period during the school holidays where teachers go for free. Um, which is amazing and then the rest of the family gets a discount. There's also certain schemes like ANZ when you take out a home loan they will give you a certain percentage off your interest rates um, when you're repaying your home mortgage. I don't know enough about that but that's just something I read up um, and you can also get discounts, discounts at warehouse stationery which is kind of like um, the warehouse stationery here sells things like laminators, printers, office furniture, and stationery, a teacher's dream, and um, so that's really great as well. So my final money saving tip here, especially if you're a family or you have kids, is to buy year passes. Here year passes definitely work out far cheaper if you are finding that you are visiting a place multiple times. This year we are actually going to be investing in our first year pass and that's going to be for Kelly Tolton's aquarium. And the reason why we picked the aquarium and not the zoo this time is a it's cheaper um, it is at the moment on special so it's gonna cost us a lot less to purchase that and the reason we chose the aquarium is because so in the winter here in Auckland it gets really cold and it rains so much and it just makes so much more sense to go somewhere that's indoor and we can go anytime we like with those year passes we can also skip the queue which is awesome and we get discounts on things like shark cage diving um, going with the pink like going to have a penguin encounter and things like that so that makes it really great as well the other one which a friend of mine actually has is a zoo annual pass and they love that and the zoo is definitely one that's worth it as well if you haven't seen my video about the zoo I'll link that down below for you as well what an amazing zoo we have here in Auckland um, but there are so many different year passes you can get here and that's a really great way to put your money and to really get more bang for your buck Okay guys, I hope you found these tips useful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to share your own money saving tips down below and I will see you in my next one.